Move off when you're ready please, out through the gate to the left. We should have priority through the gate, as vehicles to the right have a stop line. At the end of this service road, turn left, then, turn immediately right onto the main road please, so, that's left, then right. Ready to slow to a crawl, or better still, stop and look for a few seconds to the right in particular, as the view will likely be severely restricted. As we look to emerge, aiming for the lane to then turn right, but if there's a queue, don't pull out into the middle if that would mean blocking the left turn lane for others. Now, turning onto the main road, looking, both sides, but also this junction here for vehicles pulling out that we may have to wait for, as we would have to have enough time not just to pull out, but to get up to speed as well. Following buses, we should see if they are going to signal to stop at bus stops, particularly those that would block our path. Keep close to the center line to see around the bus, we can't proceed. The last passenger has gotten off the bus, and there's nobody waiting to get on, so the bus could pull off shortly anyway. As soon as the bus starts signaling right to pull away, we should look to give way to it if we haven't already committed to overtaking. At the roundabout, turn right, third exit. We can already see to the right we'll probably have a gap to go as it's currently clear, but keep checking. Stay off the hatch markings, unless absolutely necessary, it's just one lane only. Despite the arrows, keep to the left-hand lane, the right-hand arrow isn't meant for us, it will just lead you round the roundabout again. Careful not to straddle, or switch lanes over these road markings. If we got stuck on the inside lane, we'd just have to go round again. We're just far enough along that we're not blocking the roundabout exit to our left. This would be another thing to plan ahead for if there's traffic like this. As well as looking ahead, look out for traffic signs entering the new road. Looking ahead for anything that could slow us down, like if the traffic lights may be about to change for pedestrians waiting at the crossing, for speed limit changes, and queues of traffic. Take the next road on the left. Parked cars, so be ready to give way. Follow the road, it bends round to the right. Then, at the end of the road, turn right please.
Okay, these vehicles are blocking the road, we'll just slowly drive with two wheels along the drop curb on the left if there are no pedestrians there. And rejoin the road please. Thanks, that's just because the road was blocked. At the end of the road, turn left. The examiner wanting us to take the escape route up the curb would only be in emergencies or if there's a big obstruction in the road. Here, we should look to allow the pedestrian to cross as they should have priority at a junction. On a very steep hill we could use the handbrake if it looks like we'll have to wait a few seconds. Take the next road on the right. We'll slow early so that we don't get to the point of turn until the oncoming cars have passed. Pull up on the left please, just by the big tree. Thanks, and drive on when you're ready. Testing the hill start. Take the next road on the right. Pull up on the left in a safe place please. Thanks, we'll now start the independent driving section which will be following a series of instructions given by the satnav. Drive on when you're ready. At the end of the road, 
turn left, A508, Harbour Road North. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A508, Harbour Road North. Looking ahead towards the road markings just before the roundabout, we'd be able to see that we need the right hand lane to go ahead. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Now we can see easily on the camera too. If you were stuck in the left hand lane and couldn't safely move over to the ahead lane, then just turn left rather than trying to go ahead in the left-hand lane. Let's see what some of the central road markings mean on this road. We have the double solid white line, which means both us and oncoming traffic cannot cross over their respective lines, unless turning into an entrance on the right or overtaking something moving at less than 10 miles per hour. With the road markings now, we could cross to the other side but oncoming traffic cannot cross to our side, they still have the solid line, we have a broken line. Now either side could cross to the other, but the long dashed lines are called hazard lines and we should be extra careful if looking to overtake. Now the dashed lines are a bit shorter. Going back to the longer hazard lines again. When they were a bit shorter, those were just standard center line markings. The hazard lines indicate you can legally overtake but there will be a hazard, such as a crossroads, narrowing of the road, likely to be accompanied by a road sign, or in this instance the sweeping bends, where it's difficult to see really far ahead. While the sat nav gives the next direction, you'll see some curved arrow road markings on the center line. After 500 yards, turn left, Brampton Lane. They are to indicate that we should return to our side of the road, if we aren't already there, as there is a particular hazard coming up, this one being that turn off to the right. What if someone emerged from there and we were on the wrong side of the road? Turn left. also have the word slow painted on the road before a hazard, that's rather self-explanatory.
400 yards, turn left, A5199, Northampton Road. There's a 30 sign ahead, and we're going steeply uphill, so anticipate changing to a lower gear before our speed gets too low, otherwise the car will start to struggle. Even steeper uphill now, and we have to give way, so adjust the speed and have the gear ready a little earlier than usual so we can leave room to the give way line and transition to clutch control. Looks like a fast road again, but remember the last signs we saw were 30, so remain disciplined. The series of lines on the other side of the road are simply to make oncoming traffic aware of slowing down before entering the village. The center lines now mean that oncoming traffic could cross to our side, but we can't cross to theirs. We have the solid line, they have the broken dashed line. This is a new roundabout the sat nav doesn't recognize, we're just going to follow the path to the right please, coming up. And we'll continue to follow the sat nav. Again, we can time our approach to slot in behind oncoming traffic without having to come to a stop. Turn right, grass groft, then turn left. We're just following the road to the left, rather than turning left. Turn left.
end of the road, turn left, Redland Drive. Turn left. Pull up on the right please, in a safe place, this will be your parking maneuver. Okay, I'd now like you to reverse for about two car lengths in a straight line, keeping reasonably close to the curb please. When you're ready. Look over each shoulder, as well as ahead, and stop for any pedestrians or vehicles that start to get close. Look all around again before continuing. That's far enough, thanks. And drive on when you're ready. It looked like the road signs had been tampered with or removed completely, but we are back onto the 40 road, albeit briefly. on the left, in a safe place please. Thanks, that's the end of the independent driving section. I'll give you directions as normal from now on. Drive on when you're ready please. The next traffic lights will be turning right. I would like you to approach in the right hand lane and keep to the right hand lane through the traffic lights, and after, to help with our directions for later. in this right hand lane now. As the lane splits again, keep to the right hand lane for following the road ahead please. And at the next traffic lights, turn right.
a roundabout, turn left, first exit. Take the next road on the left, then turn immediately right please, heading back to the test center. We'll head through the gate into the car park and then drive forward into any bay on the left or the right please. You've already done your maneuver, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Thanks, switch off the engine please. Alright, that's the end of the test, and I'm pleased to say you've passed.